Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. I can't tell you how hard this is for me to believe. I can't tell you how blessed I feel that this is the case, but Hannah and I are actually coming up on our one-year anniversary at First Baptist. And you know, they say time flies when you're having fun, and I think that holds true in the church as well. You know, if we just come every Sunday morning and we don't really plug in, we miss out on a lot of things that are happening in our church. And I think it's safe to say that we've had some great things happening here at First Baptist Church Central City. So I thank God for that and we thank God every day that He's brought us here and thank you all as well. But that being said, you know, when I first arrived, we went through a sermon series called, What is Church? And in that sermon series, we looked at what a church does, and we talked about the seven basic purposes of a church. And do you remember what those are? I'm not going to wait for you to answer. Those are, again, worship, prayer, devotion to God's Word, being led by the Holy Spirit, doing ministry, having fellowship and building one another up, and spreading the gospel. And out of those seven purposes, we formed our vision and mission statement. Do you know those? Everybody's looking for the bulletin. We print those on our bulletin every Sunday morning. I encourage you to memorize those. They're very helpful. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I encourage you to memorize those. Uh, very good for us to know those. But those are, again, our visions that every single person in Central City and the wider Muhlenberg County community would know Jesus Christ personally. And our mission for accomplishing that is that we'd be loving Jesus, telling others about Jesus, and equipping people to follow Jesus. And we talked about this initially. If you look at your cell phone, you'll find that you probably have LTE coverage. Well, LTE, loving Jesus, telling others about Jesus, equipping people to follow Jesus. We want LTE coverage in our community. We want LTE coverage in our church. Just a helpful way to remember that. But tonight we're going to begin a series of sermons on both Sunday and Wednesday nights where we go back over these seven basic purposes. And I hope that this will be a time of reminder and of once again reflecting on what it is that we as a church are supposed to be doing. So with that, we kind of go back to where we got those seven basic purposes from. We go back to Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. And it says this, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Before we continue, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you again for your word, and we thank you for this time that we have together. We just ask now, Father, that you would speak to us, and Lord, that you would open us to receive your word. God, that you would open your word to us, that we would have understanding of it. And Father, we thank you so much for the mercy and grace that we've been shown through Jesus Christ our Lord. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. I'm not going to take the time to draw out all seven of the purposes from this passage tonight the way I did last year. We don't have that much time, and we've also already identified those seven purposes. But I want to say this tonight. The early Christians had given their lives to Jesus, and thus they gave their lives as well to His church. As Christians today, nothing has changed. God hasn't changed his word hasn't changed, and his plan for us has not changed. So when we give our lives to Jesus, fully expecting that he will keep his promise to save us, then the natural expression of that should be for us also to give our lives to his church. You know, so often the hypothetical question that comes up is, can a person be a Christian and not go to church? And this question is really asked without any kind of reference to shut-ins, okay? Obviously, shut-ins cannot be here, but rather the question that's really being asked kind of behind the question is this. Because we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, then that means there's nothing we can do to be saved. 
And we also know that we cannot sin our way out of God's grace once we are truly saved. Therefore, if someone believes in Jesus but doesn't come to church, then they're still saved, right? Okay, that's really the question there. That's really what's meant to be asked with that hypothetical question. Can a person be a Christian and not go to church? And when you think through the logic that's given there, it makes sense that the answer would be yes. A person can be a Christian and go to heaven one day and still not go to church. But when you ask the question in that way, you're making a lot of assumptions. And the biggest assumption that you're making is that it's possible for a Christian to not want to worship Jesus, to not follow Jesus, and therefore as well to not love Jesus. And we know that's impossible. The word Christian refers to disciples of Jesus, followers of Jesus. And Jesus has said this, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. The Apostle James, who is the half-brother of Jesus, said this, You believe that God is one, you do well. The demons also believe and shudder. So we see that it's evident from God's Word that we cannot merely say we believe in Jesus and just think that because we think the right thoughts, we are thereby Christians, we are thereby followers of Jesus, but rather... People who truly believe in Jesus and thus have eternal life love Jesus. And therefore they give their lives to Jesus. And Jesus has called us, his people, to be a part of his church. When we were saved, we became a part of the body of Christ. We were each give, given a specific role. We were each given specific gifts so that we could serve God within that body. But we cannot do that if we have cut ourselves off from that body. God has a purpose for His church. God has a plan for His church. And God expects His redeemed people to be an active part of His church. Because being a church means something. Being a church member means something. And that meaning has nothing to do with setting back and waiting for people to serve us and cater to us. Church membership means throwing ourselves into the work of God's kingdom because Jesus threw himself into the work of redeeming us. You want to know how much of yourself to give to Jesus? Look at how much of himself Jesus gave for you. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7-11 through 11 say this, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And by this, the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. God showed his love for humanity when he sent his only begotten son into the world that he might suffer and pay the price for our sins. And by his blood, the Son of God paid for the redemption of his entire church. He paid for the sins of everyone who had put their trust in him. And Jesus loves his bride, the church, and he wants to work through his bride in the world today. Our world is broken and in darkness. 
And people need a healing light to shine on them. That's the work that Jesus intends to do through His church. But if we don't love one another enough to get involved in the work of the church, if we don't love people enough to want to see them come to know Christ and receive eternal life, then we don't love Jesus. Because His love transforms us. And if that's the case, that we don't love Jesus, then we need to forget what our idea of church is. We need to forget what our idea of church membership is, and we need to get back to the cross of the Savior and His blood shed for the forgiveness of sins in all who believe. We need to go back to behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world so that we can see the beauty and the fulfillment that comes from worshiping, praying, learning, following, edifying, serving, and sharing along with His people, our brothers and sisters. So may God help us at First Baptist Church of Central City to be the church that He has put us here in this place and at this time to be the church He has put us here to be. Pray with me. Almighty God, we thank You for Your church. And Lord, we thank You for this church, this expression of Your worldwide church here at First Baptist Church of Central City. God, we thank You for the opportunity to be here. We thank You for our membership in this place. God, we thank You for the way in which You call us to serve You along with one another. And God, we pray that You would help us to let nothing hinder us from serving You and from doing the work of Your kingdom. God, help us to love Jesus and tell others about Jesus and equip people to follow Jesus. We pray that you would take us out into our community, that everyone in Central City and in this county and in this community would know Jesus Christ personally. God, we pray that you would equip us and use us for the work. And Lord, we pray that you would help us every day to go back to the gospel, to go back to a crucified and risen Lord and to recognize who it is that we serve. God, we ask again that you use us for your glory. Help us here to do your will. And it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.